Hey, welcome to Bolt Banders. Your boy Curtis here and Kendrick. Hey, what's going on, San Diego? We are previewing the Chargers game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Week 13 at the Q. Buccaneers headed west. Headed out west. All right. Um, Chargers come off, come off a good victory against the Texans, and now they got the Buccaneers, who are not uh, the easiest. But hey, foe. they're coming off a big victory at Tampa against the Seattle Seahawks, only allowing five points against that team. Pretty good. That's pretty good, man. I might say. But um, as we'll get to, Curtis, we're going to talk about why the Buccaneers are not exactly a great road team, not exactly a well-traveled team. Yeah. Um, quick shout-out, Chargers beat Texans. And ruined their undefeated home streak real quick. I just want to throw that out there. And the Chargers are also 3-1 and one against the AFC South. So maybe we're not in the right division. Might want to talk about the Chargers moving to San Antonio, huh? Oh, never no. mind. Nah. JK, we'll stay in the AFC JK, West. JK, JK, JK. <laughs> All right, real quick. Um, let's talk Buccaneers. What This team, they have a guy by the name of Jameis Winston. Famous Jameis, Florida State. A bomber and a runner, for sure. And uh, one guy I really like that I know from the Johnny Manziel Texas A&M days, Mike Evans, Giga Maggies, number one fantasy football wide receiver in my mind, next to that guy Antonio Brown. Mm -hmm. But when you talk NFL, we're not talking about a guy who's top five, top ten. He's getting up there. Oh, but yeah. Jameis chucks this guy the ball. This guy runs it. Casey Hayward is definitely going to have a big thing. And um, I think Mike Evans could go off here. He could have a game. And you got to watch out for healthy Doug Martin, too. I mean, it's hard to, hard to know because last week, in my opinion, Hayward almost shut down DeAndre Hopkins. Hopkins. I, I would agree with he that. He had a too. couple good catches, Hopkins, but other than that, I mean, that pick on Hopkins was unreal. And I think it's funny that we're we're talking about the Texans, who the guys that we keyed on last week were DeAndre Hopkins, CJ mm -hmm. Fedorowicz, and Lamar Miller. And this week, for the Buccaneers, we're keying in on Mike Evans, Cameron Brait, a tight end, and Doug Martin. So it's kind of the same look that you're getting from the offense, especially when you got a guy like Cecil Shorts, a fast, small receiver, and you had a guy they also like have Will Fuller. Rodgers running the ball. Yeah. So Jacquez Rodgers in there in that RBBC. But I mean, it's the same look to me for the offense, Curtis. And I think if the defense gets a little bit healthier. Big, big difference, though, is uh, they have a quarterback legitimately that can throw the ball under pressure and he's smart and he can run the ball we haven't had we haven't really played a quarterback that's so mobile as winston hey man mariota, mariota did some things and james coming from the same draft yeah, class they're, they're similar but um overall we I haven't faced james james definitely has that high football acumen that you talk about for a franchise quarterback for yeah. sure um so our defense man we gotta step it up in terms of defending the pass this week Big time. We gotta be ready for Winston to roll out and just run it. Um, but us as an offense, Phil going up against their defense. Uh, we really they're stronger on their pass defense, the Buccaneers. Yeah, I mean you got their first round draft pick Vernon Hargreaves, who's been yeah. great in the secondary. You got that old guy Brent Grimes still grinding out doing his thing. He knows Philip well from the Miami Dolphins days, so watch for him. Um, at safety, you know you got guys like. Um, Name, name completely escapes me, but we'll get to it because I was going to set up a injury report on that. But you also got Chris Gerald, Conte. Chris Connie. Yep, there's him. Connie. And uh, you got Conte. Gerald McCoy up front. You got a couple of good guys up there in the front seven. So, I mean, all around, I think that the Buccaneers are a good unit. The secondary is definitely their strength in the defense. Agreed. Um, they really got to get it going, though. And running the ball last week that Gordon only had 70 yards. I mean, that's not... Very little, but it's not enough in my opinion. Um, he can hit 100, and we should be pushing him to do so. And we got to do that this week. Always seems to be a topic is pushing Gordon more and more and more and more. That offensive line needs to be way more aggressive again um, to run the ball with Gordon. And I think as far as passing, you know, we're talking about the secondary. I think Gates and Henry can really shine against that Buccaneers linebacking core. I think Gates with zero catches last week and the Texans really keying on him. Yeah. He took up a lot of defenders. You would think the Buccaneers would look at how open the other Chargers' weapons were and would kind of try to even it out because the Texans, the whole entire game, keyed down on Gates. You know, you talk about double coverages. You talk about just setting a guy up on him on a pick. And I think mm -hmm. one of the key plays of the game, Curtis, was when Tyrell Williams goes up over the top, um, Gates drew a safety down, down to the box, and that's what set up Tyrell over the middle. So 
the Buccaneers have to look at that, and I think Gates and Henry are going to have the openings in this game. And what's key now is you've had games where now Inman has gone off, Williams has gone off, Henry's had his games. So now it's a matter of who's open. And everyone's talking about this Gates record that he's three touchdowns away. So watch for him getting chipping into that one. It's a a record that I thought would be beaten a lot, or it would have been broken a lot sooner, but it hasn't, unfortunately. And I think health and age is, you know, health and age talking to that, knowing that he's a decent veteran player, um, has limited that. And I got to say real quick to all the San Diego radio stations out there, Antonio Gates is not leaving the Chargers. I'm just gonna say that right now. Him and Phil are gonna retire together. Book it. Yeah, I mean. Rivers has, I think, a couple more years left, or more than Gates, but because I think Gates is starting to decline. Mm-hmm. We, can, we can see it, you know. Um, but he ain't going to the Patriots, let me tell you that no, much. No, no, no. He's a charger, man. He's a charger. All right, injury report. Now, we were talking about two big names on the Buccaneers' defense that will not be playing, Connie and McCoy. Woo! Oh, my. It, looks, it looks like they will not be playing. We'll see, but uh, if you know Chris Connie and Gerald McCoy out there, oh man, oh my goodness. Have a day, Melvin Gordon. Mm-hmm. Have a day, tight ends. Let's go. Let's get it. Yeah, I mean, you don't have your nose tap on your safety. Mm-hmm. The only real yeah. guy you're going to have on the D-line is Robert Ayers coming on the edge, and then, whew, man, get to it, boys. Those are two big guys that could possibly not play. I mean, they haven't practiced as of Thursday, which is not a good sign. I'm going to say, Curtis, Lord help us if Robert Ayers is on Joe Barksdale. Oh, my. Yeah, we got lucky last week with uh, Clowney. I yeah, think. just King Barksdale Dun- had a better King game. Dunlap got a little bit lucky with Joe Clowney. We'll leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think the O-line did pretty well. Being sure. Clowney was the man that was going to take Rivers sure. down. Um, Chargers injured. Jatavis Brown still injured, banged up. Come back to us. Come on, come on, young buck. Come back. Uh, Williams completely shoulder, expect him to play. Completely shoulder injury. Expect him to play. Hasn't practiced yet this week, but tape it up, put a pad on it. Wouldn't be surprised if he went out. I'll be shocked play. if Tyrell Williams is a plan. Flowers won't play. Concussion, I think, is too big of a deal for him. Oh, man. If he did, though, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. He's had a lot already this Sure, season. he's got a clean clear protocol, and I think he would have cleared it by Tuesday, so don't expect Flowers to play sadly. Flowers, no go. And Trevor Williams, get at it. Dude, I mean, with Brown, with Ch- with Chavis Brown, they're going to let him rest because my boy Corey Toomer is just... Corey Toomer. Playing the game. Let me give you that one right now. Another week, another Corey Toomer. Let's get that guy on the show. What's Corey right? Toomer up to? Corey Toomer. We'll interview next. You're next, Corey. All right. Um, nothing else I really got to say. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Me. And Curtis, I think that, um, you know, in Chargers' current events, you talk about a guy, former Sports Illustrated, ESPN, NFL analyst Jim Trotter. We'll be talking about him in another episode. Annotate that one right there. That's going to look pretty good. And uh, as far as social media is, Curtis... We have joined a new platform. Where are we going today? We're going to Instagram. Oh, what? Blue Banner has pictures? Wow. Pictures. Yep, you know it. You gotta have pictures with the same name as Chargers. So, Bull Banner is joining Instagram. The young kids out there, they wanted us to make it, so here we are. Shout out to your boy Chris Savage Chris on Savage. that one. Well done. Getting that done for us. He wanted it, and we, we said, if the fans want it, let's do it. Yep. So here we are doing it. All right. That's all we got for this. One more thing, oh, Curtis. Oh, there's one thing. Part two of the David Arganoff interview, where we talk some shop on the Charger season and all things. A Patreon exclusive episode now on YouTube. If you'd like to see more Patreon exclusives, you can find us at patreon.com slash bolt banner. Check it out. One dollar a month. You can get all kinds of bolt banner exclusives, all that good talk. Maybe even be on the show, Curtis. It goes up from there. Starts with $1 and you get way more. All right, guys, that's all we got today for the preview of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers facing our San Diego Chargers at the queue. Kickoff is 1.25 p.m. Pacific time. Bolt up, San Diego. Bolt up, San Diego. H3, Qualcomm Stadium. H3. Be there. Be there.